Today we're going to talk about parallelograms. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral, such as this one, in which the two pairs of opposite sides are parallel to one another. So we have that this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. We'll see how parallelograms are actually tightly connected with another type of symmetry called point symmetry or central symmetry or point reflection. These terms all refer to the same kind of thing in which you have a point, for example this point, which is the center of reflection, and then you just reflect all points with respect to this point. For example, this point goes here. In other words, the image of the point is such that the center of symmetry is the midpoint of the old point and the new point. And so these two points are images of one another under the symmetry, and this point and this point also. And from this it follows, for example, that uh, this line under the symmetry goes to this line here. But first let's talk about the parallelogram. So in a parallelogram we have some equal angles, and I'm going to mark them on the screen. And they follow, of course, because of the parallel lines. Also we have the following angles are equal. Uh, this one to this one, and the green angles there. All this follows from the parallel lines. We have this one and this one, and also this one and this one. Now we can notice that we have congruent triangles. This triangle here is congruent to this triangle here because they have the same angle. See, this angle equals this angle, this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle, and they share a side, this side. And because of that, we can mark some equal sides, and that's great. That means that in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal to one another. Now I'm going to mark that this angle here equals this angle here, again from the parallel lines, and now see what we've got. Another pair of congruent triangles. This triangle here, and this triangle here. They have that this side equals this side, and they also have the same angles. You see this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle. And so they are congruent, so we can mark this side equals this side, and this side equals this side. So now do you see why I talked about this reflection with respect to a point thing in the beginning? Well, because if we take a reflection with respect to this point, the intersection of the diagonals in a parallelogram, it follows that the image of this point is actually this point, and the image of this point is this point. So now, this segment here is symmetric to this segment here with respect to this point, because this point goes here and this point goes here. And so, for example, if I take the midpoint of this segment, it would be centrally symmetric to the midpoint of the other segment with respect to the same point, like this. And then this length would equal this length. And these are pretty much all the basic properties of the parallelogram. Now we're going to see how we can prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, so we can use these properties. First of all, suppose that we have the picture from the beginning, so a point that is the center of the symmetry, and then the reflections of two points, for example, this point gets reflected here, and this point gets reflected here. Then we're going to prove that these four points form a parallelogram. First of all, note that this here is a line, these three points lie on the single line, and these three points here also lie on the single line. And so this angle equals this angle. Then note that this triangle here and this triangle here are congruent, because they have one side, this side equals this side, another side, this side equals this side, and an angle here and here between the two sides in common. So because they have these three elements in common, they are congruent, and so this angle here equals the corresponding this angle here, and this angle here equals the corresponding this angle here. And therefore, this line is parallel to this line, because of, for example, because of these two angles. And similarly, we have that this triangle here is congruent to this triangle here. And so this angle would be equal to this angle, as corresponding angles and congruent triangles. But this angle equals this angle means that this line is parallel to this line. And so we got that this is parallel to this, and this is parallel to this, and hence this is a parallelogram. Consider now this situation in which we have a quadrilateral, such that this side equals this side, and this side equals this side. The question is, is it necessarily a parallelogram? And the answer is yes, it is. Here's how we can prove it. Note now that this triangle here is congruent to this triangle, because they have three equal sides. This side equals this side, this side equals this side, and this side is common. And therefore, this angle equals the corresponding here, and this angle equals the corresponding one here. Now from this angle equals this angle, we get that this side is parallel to this side. And from this angle equals this angle, we get that this side is parallel to this side. And so, it's a parallelogram. Finally, consider this configuration where we have a quadrilateral, where this side equals this side, and this same side is parallel to this other side. You can think of it as the result of translation. Just take this side 
and translate it or shift it up so that it comes here. Something like this. Now, can we prove that this is a parallelogram? Oh yes, suppose I take this diagonal, because of this side parallel to this side, we have that this angle equals to this angle, and then these two triangles are, you guessed it, congruent. Of course, because they share a side, this side equals this side, and the angle between the two common sides in both triangles is the same. And so, we have that this length equals this length, for example. And now we get to the situation from before, where we have a quadrilateral, in which the two pairs of opposite sides have equal lengths, and therefore it's a parallelogram. This is the optional problem. We have a parallelogram, and a point inside of the parallelogram, such that this angle equals this angle. And we need to prove that this blue question mark angle equals this blue question mark angle. And here is the solution. The first step in the problem is to do a translation, or sliding. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take this triangle here and slide it down here. Now the sliding works perfectly because we have that this side is parallel to this side and also the length of this side equals the length of this side. So if I shift this triangle like that and put it here, if I just slide it without rotating or anything, then the two sides, this side and this side, will match exactly. They will fit perfectly to one another. And so we get this picture here. Previously, we proved that if we slide a segment, then we get a parallelogram. For example, we took this segment and we slided it and it went here. Then this segment and this segment make a parallelogram right here. Why? Well, because when we slided it, we didn't rotate it, so we didn't change the direction of this line. So these lines still are parallel. And the length, we didn't change the length also of this, so this is parallel to this and equal and two parallel and equal segments means a parallelogram. So this is a parallelogram here. Now that we know it's a parallelogram, we can use some of its properties. For example, that this angle, the red angle, equals this angle here. Now consider this quadrilateral here. It's cyclic, because this angle equals this angle. And therefore, we can move this blue angle here. This angle equals this angle. On the other hand, this is a parallelogram. And in a parallelogram, the pairs of opposite angles are equal. And so this angle equals this angle. And so, because this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle, it means that the two angles marked with a question mark are equal.